They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and it turns out Cerberus is at least part Labradoodle. All joking aside though, the real story behind Labradoodles and the designer dog trend they started is truly more heartbreaking than happy. Why? Here's a look at the dark truth behind the Labradoodle. First bred back in the 1980s, the Labradoodle at first seemed to be a heaven-sent solution to a serious need. Breeder Wally Conran was working with the Royal Guide Dog Association of Australia when a blind woman in Hawaii contacted them with a special request. She needed a hypoallergenic guide dog. He started out trying to train a standard poodle, but even though they're smart and relatively hypoallergenic, they're terrible guide dogs. So he crossed a poodle with a Labrador Retriever, hoping to get a puppy that had the poodle's hypoallergenic coat, plus the Labrador's guide dog abilities. Three puppies resulted, and one of them had the magic combination of traits. Conran thought he hit on something that would allow people with allergies to adopt a guide dog, which was a huge deal. There was one major catch though, since it was a genetic crapshoot, which puppies would inherit which traits, it would take careful breeding to get a puppy that was actually hypoallergenic, and then careful training to teach it to become a guide dog. Unfortunately, Conran discovered most people didn't want to foster and train a crossbreed mutt. So in an effort to jumpstart this potentially beneficial new idea, he announced his new breed, the Labradoodle, as a gimmick. It worked. Suddenly, everyone wanted one, and Conran told Psychology Today that he quickly realized his efforts had backfired. While all his dogs were tested for hypoallergenic coats, other people hopping on the bandwagon weren't testing their dogs. The result was a non-standardized breed being marketed as something it wasn't. Hypoallergenic guide dogs that were often neither hypoallergenic or suited to become a guide dog. Conran told Dog King that even the Kennel Club originally condemned the idea. Breeders didn't want to tarnish their lines with a different breed of dog, and that's a problem that's continued. It means the dogs used to breed Labradoodles are often the ones that have health problems or genetic conditions. And that means Labradoodles and derivatives like Double Doodles are often less than healthy from birth. Born to parents who aren't healthy enough to create purebred dogs, that's why they're no longer a go-to dog for guide dogs. Many don't have the health, temperament, or ability to be guide dogs anymore. Conran has spoken against the continued breeding of Labradoodles, knowing that many come from backyard breeders just out to make a quick buck. And it's not just Labradoodles anymore either. The popularity of Labradoodles kicked off the trend of breeding two different purebred dogs to create a new trendy designer dog. Poochons, Shy Poos, Schnoodles, Golden Doodles, the list goes on, and they're often prone to major inherited health and behavior problems. Conran told Psychology Today, I opened a Pandora's box, that's what I did. I released a Frankenstein. In the UK, even the House of Lords has condemned this kind of crossbreeding as cruel, with Tory Lord Black of Brentwood calling for legislation to stop the trend of breeding designer dogs. Teacup breeds, like the ones some starlets accessorize with, are of the utmost concern. They're usually the product of parents that were runts or premature puppies themselves, and they're particularly prone to health problems that lead to lives filled with brittle bones and weaknesses that leave the dogs in constant pain. And according to Dogstar, the ends of their short lives are often catastrophic organ failure. In this case, we're actually choosing the weakest, the smallest, the sickliest, and then concentrating their genetics into the next generation, and I think that's quite irresponsible. Labradoodles don't seem quite so adorable now, do they? Conran says he lives with the guilt of kicking off this designer dog trend and he stopped breeding them himself. He bred only 31 Labradoodles after careful genetic research and testing, and instead of hopping on the bandwagon, he retired. When asked why he didn't have Labradoodles, he said, if I'd gone into breeding Labradoodles for a living, I'd be on easy street, but there's no way I'd do it. My conscience wouldn't let me.